Hello, makers. Welcome to Always Yarn First, a podcast about knitting, crochet, spinning, and all the yarny goodness in between. I'm Lindsay, and I'm coming to you from Little Rock, Arkansas. And as always, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Always Yarn First. Before we get into it, I always like to make a note of the current make-alongs I have running here on the channel. The first one is hashtag nothing but double, and I am running this with my friend Lori from Arkansas Yarn Co. This is, um, we're doing all year long, it's knit and crochet, and it is hold any two yarns or the same yarn double and make a blanket. Any blanket, baby blanket, anything, and you can also post your finished objects over on Arkansas Yarn Co. Ravelry Group. The other one is very similar. I'm running here currently through June, and it is hashtag it's Marling Darling. So the difference between this and the other one, um, you can make almost any object. I'm not including the washcloths, but you have to hold two different yarn double. So it can be the same weight, two fingerings, maybe different colors held together, or a fingering and a mohair, you know, a lace weight and a bulky, anything like that to get a different tech to play with texture or coloring. And like I said, uh, that is just on my channel here. Um, I don't have a finished object thread, but I do have a chat thread on my Ravelry group page. So this is episode 35. And if you're new here, welcome. I name every episode of my podcast off of a song title because I am a big music lover of most genres. Um, so this week I named this episode Golden, which is a song by Harry Styles, in case you've been living under a rock. Um, and I will have a link to, instead of just the song, I had a friend who asked for the uh, playlist for um, my podcast, which I have been keeping just so I can keep track and I don't use the song again, but I have made a playlist open to the public and I will link to that on Spotify below. If you'd like to follow the play playlist, you will see every song I have used so far since I've started. All right, so let's get into it. Um, today I have a finished object. I have a few new casts on. Of course, I have whips. I'm going to show a little spinning. Um, acquisitions. And yeah, I think that's it. So uh, first, let's start with my finished object. I finished my Amber Dextra sock by Blame the Knots. I um, had had one complete sock by the last time that I actually finished last year. I did a test knit for her and we only had to finish one sock to make sure the patterning was right. And I just never started a second one, which is actually very unlike me. Let me show you the texture of this sock. Just a fun texture. And then the other one, uh, the texture goes the opposite direction. So um, this was on my Whips Make Nine board for this year. So as of right now, I frogged one object from that list. I finished six objects. So I have two left, um, which is, I'll put a picture in of that Make Nine. I have my Hohilakatelli Lace and Fade Boxy, and I have the Tunisian Crochet Project I was working. So both of those leftover things are some stuff I need brain space for. Because the last time I picked up the fade, um, Lace and Fade Boxy, um, I was just starting a lace section, and I realized my count was wrong, which you know affects your whole lace patterning. So I have to like really sit down figure out where I went wrong to back up so that I can fix it for the lace section. That's why it hasn't gotten done. And then the Tunisian crochet, because I was kind of learning it as I go, I'm gonna, that was been months ago. So I will have to go back on, watch more videos, remember what I'm even doing for the basic stitches 
which it wasn't hard to learn. It's just I haven't touched it for a while. So um, I'm getting ready to go visit my grandma again. So as far as the rest of this month, I'm not touching either one of those whips until I am back and I can focus on them with the full attention that they need. So, but yeah, I only have two more left and we'll be going in to May. So that won't be a problem. I'm really excited. All right, so that is my only finished object. So naturally, I've cast on more things, like one does. <clears throat> well, first of all, I, I picked up this second sock and did it so fast. And remember that I really do enjoy making socks. So I kind of was looking um, at my stash and thought, I should just, you know, cast on another, like a vanilla-ish sock. And then um, remembered I had gotten uh, some mustache yarn that I've showed on here. And I got one of the Star Wars colorways. This is called the Dark Emperor, which is supposed to be for uh, Lord Palpatine. It's basically just all these shades of gray and then occasionally this crazy bright blue, almost violet colored um, where I'm at right now. And my friend Scott is a huge Star Wars fan. And so I had picked this colorway for him. And then I thought, oh, wouldn't it be cool if I could give it to him on May the 4th? Like, May the 4th be with you, Star Wars Day. And then I'm like, oh, we're in April. Like, I need to get going on that. So I cast on for that. Um, I'll probably take this on my trip for a vanilla sock. So it is vanilla, and what that means, if you've never done a vanilla sock, is I'm not following a pattern. I'm just doing the ribbing to what I like, I'm doing mostly plain stitches, then heel, foot, so on. Uh, so what I did with this, I did switch up a little bit just because I was playing. Uh, I did a one by one ribbing. Actually, let me show you this side, because where this stitch marker is, is where I stopped the ribbing the cuff and then I switched to a three by one I have never made my friend Scott a pair of socks um, so I don't know like if his feet are run wide or not I got his shoe size from his wife but I decided to do a rib sock so that way it should fit him well so I'm, again I'm just kind of playing with this but I think it mel melds nicely into each other the one by one to the three by one ribbing so I'm going to start the heel pretty soon. And yeah, so mustache yarns, if you've never gotten um, her perfect striping yarns, you get 100 grams, but they come in two different 50 gram skeins. So you cake them up and if you are really particular about your socks must be exactly, especially because these definitely aren't striped. You can see the color is like just varying shades of gray so but if you're particular about they must look exactly the same she does them identical so you can do one from each cake and you'll have matching socks so that is in my little Erin Lane bag so yeah that is an easy project I cast on and then um, I cast on yesterday, uh, essentially last night. I did this like last time I remember my top I had just cast on. Well, now I'm pretty much doing this to another top. Um, so I had been seeing on my feed, I don't even know how the algorithms work on Instagram, but a couple of years ago, I had put a pattern on my make nine list and it's called the seven sisters top. And I had, it uses cotton yarn and I had a cone of cotton yarn and I love the color. It was like a, kind of like a Kelly green color. Um, but I, I think I even like kind of swatched or I started with it and I didn't, I don't remember the yarn brand. It might have been like sugar and cream kind of situation. And I just didn't like how it felt. And so I, I never made the shirt. Took it off my make nine. 
And then, like, recently, for some reason, like, other people have discovered it. I don't know. Summer. And um, it's been showing up on my feed from, like, other people, like, making kits for it. I'm like, oh, I really do like that top. I just really didn't like the yarn I had. So here is a picture of the top. Um, I love it. It looks just kind of like a basic t-shirt, real comfy. Um, it uses, uh, let's see. It's from Blue Sky Fiber, so I'm guessing it uses their cotton yarn. Printed organic cotton, and it's in a worsted weight. It's 100% cotton. So I was trying to think of what I could make this in, and I like the, you know, kind of like the marled, color looking from this. So um, I remember that Arkansas Yarn Co. carries a worsted cotton yarn. Um, sorry for the crinkle factor. Um, so this is Queensland collection and I know a lot of yarn stores carry this. So here is the ball band. It is Coastal Cotton Ocean Mist. It is 100% cotton. It is worsted weight. The colorway I chose is Bridgewater Bay. So it's mostly kind of like a white ivory with little pops of like a peach, a coral, and a blue. Kind of like a grayish blue color in there. So here is where I'm at. Like I said, I just cast on last night. So I'm in the ribbing. I'm pretty sure, I think this is, yeah, it's bottom up. So I think so. Don't quote me on that. I'm not positive. But I'm just, yeah, it has to be bottom up because I'm doing five inches of ribbing. Yeah. So I really like how this is looking though. It's just like the little pops of color. And it kind of reminds me, like it says ocean. It reminds me of the ocean, the beach, kind of beachy colors. Um, and this cotton feels good. You know, it, it is cotton. It is soft, but it's not like some people I know complain with knitting with cotton that it hurts their hands. I haven't, I mean, I'm doing ribbing, which is not my favorite. Uh, I haven't had any problem. I, um, it feels good in my hands as of right now. So, yeah. Here is what I'm working on. Um, two, I wanted a couple of easy garments to take with me out of town. Because um, I've said before, when I go visit my grandma, I like to, I have a lot of, technically I have a lot of creative time, but I'm kind of like wiped out at the same time. So I like to have some easy kind of mindless projects. And I thought this might be a good one to bring. And last time I went, I didn't bring all of my whips like I had before. I, I chose three because I'm like, okay, just focus on three. So I'll get a lot of work done on maybe those three. So I thought this would be a really great one to have. So yeah, I'm really loving this one so far. So that is my only other cast on. So now... Let's get into the whips that you have previously seen. All right. I feel like every time I show this, I'm like, I don't know how much I've worked on it since the last podcast. <laughs> I always write down every day what I work on. Not how much I work on it, just if I touch the project, I um, write on it. I don't think I've moved. I know I've shown about this much before. I don't think I moved my progress keeper up last time. So I'm going to do that right now. Again, this might be one that goes with me because it is mindless. Um, I know I did work on it since the last time, but I still obviously haven't got to that second color yet. Um, I'm really close. I keep counting my eye cord on the side to be able to count how many rows I need to be at. So this is the Eyelet Burst Shawl by Stephen West. And this is a four color shawl that will fade into each other. 
and you can see it's just garter. Just lots and lots of knitting and some eyelets. So super easy, it is a two row repeat. It is a paid for pattern, but I definitely suggest it. Um, it is great. And I'm very excited to get the next color in, which again, here's my next color. I have it in the bag ready to go. So yeah, and this is in my Mrs. Brown's bags. All of my Mrs. Brown's bags I have had for well before pandemic. And I have put the link down below, but for the longest time there was no bags. But recently I've seen on Instagram, she's been sharing her bags. So um, make sure that if you are interested in her bags to check the link below. I don't know if she's just occasionally doing bags now since she's dying yarn, but I have seen that new bags recently. So those that have asked me and have had a hard time finding them, now's the time to check it out. All right, so this is the project I had just cast on the last podcast. This is in my Fringe Supply Co. bag. And this is my outline tank. This is using my own hand spun yarn. So here is one cake. Here's what I have left of the first cake, so I'm almost done with that. And here is where I am. Let me untangle this a bit without losing any stitches. So you'll see, last time if you remember, I literally had cast on and joined in the round. So that is where I was last time. So you can see I have quite a few inches and you can see how good it's looking. Maybe better like that with the light. It's kind of a dark yarn with navies and oranges and a little pops of white. But I'm really pleased of how this is knitting up. I was very worried because um, like you can see, I'm still learning with my spinning. This, this actually doesn't look too bad, but there are places in my yarn that you can see right there. It's kind of fuzzier, that's thicker, and then it's, you know, like right here, hanging down, it's thinner. So I was worried kind of how that would translate. Of, and I've used like a specific thick and thin yarn before, so I wasn't, I was, I was okay with it either way, but it's, it's looking pretty good. I'm quite happy with it, how the stitches are. Um, so much so where I was telling the girls at the yarn store, I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of surprised at how um, good it looks. And they said that um, probably because I'm a tight knitter actually helps too, because those stitches are getting more uniform because I tight. Whereas if I be a loose knitter, those thick parts especially are going to really um, be super thick looking. So I didn't even think about that. So yeah, I'm doing the outline tank. I am not going to knit it cropped, so I'm going to knit mine longer than it calls for. So right now this is just knitting. And I'm trying to determine if I want the, you know, one thing that is for her outline tank, T, raglan, um, she has like those drop stitches, like a panel that comes down here and then down the front. And you do a little prep work. It's a paid for pattern, so I'm not gonna say uh, too much, but you do a little prep work the first row you're knitting, but then you just knit. And I was like, isn't this supposed to have drop stitches? Like I was, I, I had to stop and read ahead, make sure I wasn't messing it up. But you do that at the end. So I'm kind of questioning if I'm going to do that or not, because um, I don't know if I want to wear, if I'm making a tank tap, I don't know if I want to necessarily have to wear another cami under it to wear it. So we'll see. I think I will determine that when it comes time to drop the stitches to see if I like how it looks or not. So I've made progress on there. All right, the next one is um, one project that is on my goals to finish this month. And I should, um, 
since I have a couple weeks. I don't think I'm going to bring this with. I, I think I'm going to try to finish it before I leave. I still have like just shy of a week and there isn't that much left really. So this is the Thunder Road by Poison Girls. So last time I had finished the back, the panel of back, and then when I showed it last time, I had this skinny little panel done and I was getting ready to pick up on the other side. So you can see I've picked up on the other side and then I have joined, so you have the armholes. So all the sides are joined to the back. So then you get to a point where you have to put your stitches back on hold. I'm not sure why that is yet. I haven't, again, read through. I'm just kind of following it. I, um, I actually haven't even cut my yarn from there yet. I just put on stitch stoppers. But the next part is I'm supposed to do the sleeves. So I don't know, I, have you ever knit something and like you're following the directions and you, you're trusting the designer, but like you're not seeing it yet. You're like, okay, I hope this works out because I'm not getting it. I mean, obviously I can see this is supposed to be a bolero. So obviously, you know, it goes over my arms, but I mean, it's really wide right here. And again, this is cotton. So I'm like, is it cause it's just, I don't know. That's why I'm wondering if there's something special, like it kind of closes this up a bit. Um, so I'm just kind of questioning the whole thing. Like I said, I'm choosing to trust the design and yeah. So next is I need to cut the yarn here. And I need to pick up a sleeve and then work that, work the other sleeve. And then I obviously must do something here. So I don't know what it is, but this looks like really big right now. Not like the picture shows where it's like a cute bolero that kind of hugs your shoulder. So I'm sure it'll work out. I'm going to keep going. But like I said, I don't really think there's that much left. So hoping to work on it a good bit this week. And the yarn I'm using for that is, it's a uh, Malabrigo Verano and the colorway Lemon Wedge. And this is like deep stash. I've had this for many years. So yeah. And this is in a bag from Kelly E. McD. Um, this is the bag I had her specialty make. I bought the fabric. She made me a bag. It is my BTS bag. I love it. So yeah. All right. Is that, that is all of my active whips. Oh, I'll show one more thing just cause um, we talked about it on goals last week. Uh, one of my goals wasn't a project so much as to get a um, swatch knit up to get yarn for the Mount Pelier top. So I was using this yarn I had, and here is my swatch so far. I did the little um, eyelets so I know what size uh, needle I used on here. And I love how this is knitting up. Where... Mm. It's the tinned Lina or line. Um, but this one, I have to hold double to get um, the gauge for uh, the Mount Paleo top. But they also have, also in the tinned, um, they have a, whatever weight I actually need that I can hold it single. But it's basically the same yarn. So... I don't have the note right in front of me and I can't find the ball band, but I am loving this. I think this would be a really nice hot weather garment and really breezy and I'm loving the stitch definition. It's good. So even though I'm not done with the swatch, I'm going to count that as a goal checked off that I basically kind of wanted to do the swatch for gauge, but also to see if I even liked 
how this felt because it's it's not scratchy what is the word I'm looking for I don't know it just feels different so I didn't know how this would feel knit up and it feels wonderful so I worked on that too all right so that is it for whips um, I have a little bit of spinning to show. Move this. My new cast on I don't even have in a bag yet. Just have it off to the side. All right. So spinning, I'm going to show you my Lazy Kate. If you're not familiar with spinning, this is a Lazy Kate. And essentially what it does is holds your bobbins on so that when you ply, like for instance, if I was plying these two together, I could easily grab these two and you know, they comfortably roll while I'm plying them. I don't have to watch it, you know, like we've all had a ball of yarn, you know, go across your floor. Uh, so this just kind of secures them. So what I do is um, on my e-spinner, I only have six bobbins, which isn't a ton. So what that means is um, especially when it comes to plying, I figure I have to have at least, that uh, kicks up at least two bobbins of things I'm going to ply together. So that's two bobbins taken care of, then another one you're, pl you're pl plying onto. Um, so I had plied this a while ago. This is my alpaca. And it spins like a dream. But, you know, it's a brown. I'm not saying it's ugly because I love it. Um, but it's a boring color to look at while you're spinning. So then I decided to change it up and I had my, let's see, do I have it here? My Gritty Knits Club that I get. I decided to get out some color. This is what's left of that bat. It's about half of it. I did half of it and I finished that. I think I'd shown that I was working on this last time. So I did one bobbin of that. And so now I was kind of fighting with this. I, I'm not sure where, again, the tag is that tells me all of the fiber that's in this, but I was kind of fighting with this. I, it kept breaking as I was spinning it, um, which was a pain, it's gorgeous. And I mean, I'll get it all done, but I was having a hard time. So now I went back to my alpaca because again, kind of a boring color, but it is a dream to spin. It just slides out your fingers. Oh, it's gorgeous. Like it does this, this light not doing it justice. Like it's gorgeous. So I figure finish a bobbin of my second bobbin of this alpaca, and then I'll apply those together. Because again, I only have six bobbins, so I kind of have to figure out what to do but i can still do two different spins i just have to ply once i have two bobbins full so yeah i'm kind of going back and forth so i'll do that and then i'll ply and then i'll go back to this one and back and forth okay that is all of my spinning all right so let's get into acquisitions so i'm going to show you what I purchased first. And then I'm going to talk about a super special acquisition that got mailed to me. So, all right. So what I got first, well, let's talk about, um, I already showed you, I cast this on, I ordered this yarn. So I have three more of these. Again, the lights glaring them out. Let me show you, this is what it looks like. Ocean Mist, the colorway. And if you're looking for a worsted cotton, um, they have these in all kinds of colors and a ton of solid colors too. So I highly recommend this. Um, I'll keep you updated as I get to knit on my project a little bit more, but I ordered four of those and that should be enough for me to finish my top. Um, so I ordered that from Arkansas Yarn Co. And then yesterday I was there at the store and got a couple more goodies. 
Um, since our weather has gotten a lot warmer here in Arkansas, I've, you know, transitioned out of my winter sweaters. Sorry, my yarn is bothering my nose. Um, and I've gotten out the, the more t-shirt, tank tops, which I don't have nearly as many of, but I'm starting to get a collection of. And this year I'm really trying to focus on those t-shirts, tanks, stuff like that to add to my collection. So I have summer knits and winter knits. Um, and I, the other day, had put on um, an old tank top I had, and it was the Streamline tank. And I really enjoyed that. I, it's by Alexander Tavel, and I used bamboo pop yarn. I used just two balls of it. And the other day I wore it, and I'm like, man, this is so comfy. It's lightweight. Um, and so when I was at the store, and, and bamboo pop is very inexpensive y'all. Um, so I looked at the colors yesterday at the store and I picked out to make another one. So I got this color. It's like a coral. Um, it is bamboo pop. It is a 50% cotton, 50% bamboo. And each 100 gram ball is 292 yards. So I had enough in two balls to make that tank top. Um, and this is the colorway Winter Squash. And again, they have lots of pretty colors, um, both like variegated and tonal like this one. So I am planning at some point to make another Streamline tee. All right, and the last thing I got, the last time I was at Arkansas Yarn Co, um, Lori was putting in an order to twice sheared sheep. Um, so, you know, she basically, would, whoever's there, when she's putting in an order, she's like, oh, does anybody need anything? Whatever. And I have been using my, no, oh, it's not here. But basically one of these, except the one I have is like 10 rows. So it goes to 10 on the number. So it hangs a lot longer. But I've been doing some patterns where I have like a four row repeat and I'm like, oh, I just, I really would like a shorter one of this where the, the long isn't getting in my way each time I go around because I put it on my beginning around and then I switch it every time I go to a row repeat. Um, so she's like, oh, they have a five row and I'm like, perfect. So um, that order had come in. So I got this one and she got this on a medium so this fits up to a us8 um she hasn't put them out in the store she has a whole order so they will be going up um in the store and online um but if you're really needing something specific and you want to give her a call at the store i'm sure she'd let you know if she has it or not but they're just not online as of yet which is saturday the 15th so this is the cool thing I got. Now I saw this on Nikki Avery's podcast. And if you are a sock knitter, I have for years used one of these, which I still love. It is a sock ruler. I have gotten to know my own size of foot and my family's and so on. And this has measurements. This just has measurements. It has centimeters and inches on it. And I am a top down knitter. So after I get my heel done, I will stick this part in the sock, in the heel, and I know where I need to knit to before I start the toe. So now, Twice Sheared Sheep has this. It's essentially the same thing, but it doesn't even have measurements on there. So what this does is it has US shoe sizes. So for instance, I'm a woman's size nine. So it has women's sizes, it says women right here. So I find size nine right here. And on the back, it even tells you direction. It says, put this for me, it would be in my heel. The arrow is down here. There's an arrow all the way to the bottom. You stick this in your arrow or in the heel and I would knit to the nine women size. At that point, I start my toe. Um, so it gives you enough room to do your toe. Uh, it has kid sizes and men sizes. These are all U.S. shoe sizes only. Um, so you can also do this if you are a toe up. So um, 
you would put this in the toe, the arrow side in the toe, same thing, until you get to that size and then start your heel. So the coolest thing about that, it is a flat bracelet, y'all. So if you know you're gonna go out to dinner with friends or whatever, and you don't even have to have the sock ruler in your bag, you just have your little sock, you're like, oh yeah, I have my ruler right here. How cool is that? I love this thing so much. Um, so I'm super excited to try this. I'm gonna take it with me to work on those socks, those vanilla socks I'm working on. So yeah, I got that all at Arkansas Yarn Co. And I think that's all I have. Nope, I have one more thing I purchased. Purchased a while ago. If you've heard me before, again, talk about socks. One of my favorite, favorite sock yarns is Tiny Human Knits. I love her base. I love the feel of her yarn. I love working on them. And her self-striping colors are just on point. Um, so she's been doing Lord of the Rings collection. I'm not a huge Lord of the Rings nerd, but this color came out. Oh my gosh. And this is Potatoes colorway. Um, and the other thing I love about her is because I do shorter socks. I don't do, you know, sh technically shorty socks. I do like ankle socks. Um, this is a 50 gram skein with a mini. It's not a ton of extra yarn that I just put in my bin. I don't make long socks. So this is totally enough for me to get a full size pair of socks for myself. I mean, and then I still have some extra. So this just came in the mail yesterday. So super excited about this in my stash of self striping. All right, now that is all of the things I purchased. So now I'm gonna tell you all a story um, about my friend Kate. I'm gonna call you my friend Kate because we haven't met in person, but you're totally my friend. So last year, if you've been following my podcast for a while, I, you know, last year, especially I was giving away prizes all year from my stash, trying to stash down things that I, I just necessarily didn't love anymore. Well, then, you know, we, we do those projects and we have scraps and we have scraps and I have a bin that's so big of fingering scraps. I'm like, what in the world am I going to do with all of these? And so I decided it would be fun to gift um, an advent calendar, basically make it up myself just out of everything that I already had. All I had to buy was the little cutesy things to put each um, skein up in. And then I even gave like some stitch markers and a little project bag I wasn't using. Everything in it was from my stash and I um, decided to give it away on my podcast because Advent calendars are super fun, but they are super expensive. Totally worth it. Not complaining to indie dyers. They do a lot of work. I can't even imagine. Um, but they're expensive. Uh, so not everyone can afford the luxury of having an advent calendar. But, you know, I'm getting rid of some of my scra scraps that I'm not using. And someone gets to win one for free. And they have the joy of opening up something every day in December along with everyone else. So how fun is that? So obviously my winner was Kate and she is one of a Kate on Instagram. And she also has a YouTube channel, which I will link below. Um, and she won and I don't know what was all going on in Kate's life around that time last year or the year before. All I know is she had said that the year before she couldn't buy an advent calendar. Now this, this last year, her husband bought her one as a gift. So she did have one coming and then she won mine. And so she said that it was gonna be a super joyous December where she could open up um, those advent calendars. And she did Vlogmas, so you'll have to go back and watch those. She opened them up every day. And out of mine, she was making, I think it was, no, it wasn't the sea glass. I think it was the dragon horde yarn sweater pattern. Kate, put in below what you made. I don't remember, but it was a scrappy sweater and she worked on it um, with my yarn. And it was great. It was fun watching her open up every one and comment on it and stuff. Um, you know, and now it's April. And a couple weeks ago on Instagram, 
she had messaged me and said, hey, is this still your address? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, okay, what, what could she be sending me? So ironically, um, the day I got her package in the mail, I had a particularly bad day the day before. Not going to get into it because I might cry. But it was a really bad day. I was talking to my friend Lori, and that was the day I actually um, got this cotton yarn. I was getting this cotton yarn in the mail, too, because I ordered something, and I actually had it shipped to me, which usually I just pick it up in store when I go. Um, but I'm like, I need some sunshine in the mail. I need some happy mail. And so I got this, which was great. But um, it was definitely overshadowed by what Kate sent me. Uh, I'm going to have to put in a picture because y'all aren't going to be able to see it from where I'm at. So Kate, very sneakily, made a second project from the yarn I gave her. I'm going to I have it folded in half here. She made an anthology throw with the rest of the scraps. Y'all, this is spectacular. Now, she, I did not, I was not this creative in putting the, that advent in this order. <laughs> she took um, the solids and made a beautiful rainbow. And then she took all the variegated and put them. And I think it looks so cool like that. It is phenomenal. And it was such a surprise. And I cried when I opened it. And she put in a sweet little note that I gave her a lot of joy. Um, giving her the advent and so she wanted to give me some joy having it knit up for me because you know the one thing about using your scraps is not everyone loves scrappy projects but you do get to see different things and you're like oh yeah I know this yarn I used it in that top I made or oh I made this for somebody else and I gifted that project um it is really cool to see your yarn that you've used for other things. And it's kind of almost like a memory blanket. So yeah, it was super, super special. And needless to say, I got my sunshine in the mail that day and whew, I'm going to cry. So, and on top of it, as if this wasn't special enough, and I will think about Kate every time I look at it, she also, while she made it, because, I mean, she's a YouTuber, she made essentially like a vlog style video, which is up now also on YouTube. And she made a video from start to finish of her making this sneaky um, talk about that she wanted to make it for me and gift it to me. And it's showing her the progress as she's doing it. Like, I can't even. It's like a 20 minute video. And I'm like... That is so cool to like go back and see her actually knitting on it and you know, she's doing it and she's like, oh, I hope Lindsay likes this. I'm like, are you kidding me? So yeah, it was just very, very emotional and it is such a special, special gift. And so hopefully we will be able to meet. She lives in Texas, so she's not that far. Um, so last year she found out about me somehow. I went to DFW Fiberfest, so did she. We did not meet there, but that's when she found my podcast. Um, so I unfortunately I don't I'm not planning on going to DFW Fiberfest this year because the Arkansas Yarn Co. retreat is the weekend before. Um, but I'm gonna find my way to meet Kate so I can give her a big old hug. So that was a super, super special acquisition. So thank you, Kate, for, you know, making me cry on video. And it's even, it's even nicer because as much as I love this project, I would never make one because I think it's as many stitches that you end up with on this thing. There's no way. There is no way. And she made this thing in two weeks. That is crazy tall. Um, so it's even more special because it's a gift I love and love to have, but I would never make for myself being a knitter, never make it. So yeah, that is it. Yeah, wipe my eyes. So that is it for this week, you guys. Um, I thank you so much for being here. Um, again, please like subscribe. I also have a Ko-Fi account. Um, 
linked below if you'd like to contribute to the podcast. Basically, what that contributes to is shipping when I send um, prizes out. It's pretty much what that goes to. And I thank you for those that have contributed in the past. So all links should be below. If you have any questions, you're always welcome to email me. Um, And I will see you again in two weeks. Bye.